Okay, so me and my husband like to fuck maybe like once a week. We uh, schedule a night together at least once a week. I oh, think y'all plan out like a nice night. Yeah, I think that that's what we do. We talk about it. Okay, so when we're going to get together this week and then we kind of plan it. I think that that's how we do because... In the lyrics in that song, you said, baby, I ain't tripping on you. You can do your I thing. Was, yeah, I was Is that for, how you are? I like, wrote that for Melissa, absolutely. Are you cool with him like doing this thing? I never go on his phone. I never be jealous or anything. I, I trust him and I believe in him. Uh, he knows I like women. So we talked about, you know, having three sons. And listen, if I want to if I want to suck some pussy, then I'm going to have to let him know. He got he to gotta be down with the shit. But listen, I would say, I, I don't know, babe. When we have a threesome, I can see you being the girl. Like, I'm like, nigga, if you get the bitch that dick that good, I'm going to fuck your ass up. Absolutely. <laughs> but you, you better but, give the bitch the dick regular. Don't give the bitch the dick like how you give it to me. How old were you when you first had your first experience with a girl? When I started thinking girls was cute, I say like 13, 14. And then when I got a little older, then I started, you know, like when I started stripping, I started, you know, messing around. We in Miami, we in Yeah, 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 what it do? It's your boy Stunt Lifestyle, and you were watching the We in Miami podcast. And today we got the one and only Jocelyn Hernandez. The one and only, the actress, the rapper, the singer, the producer, the executive, the CEO, the Puerto Rican princess. Now y'all ain't clapping in the back. Y'all got to clap. Studio on the set in the back. Clap it up. How you feeling tonight? What's wrong with that? <laughs> what up? We in Miami. We, we in is, Miami. We is in Miami, baby. Shout we out to here. you. Shout out to you, too. Thank you for having me tonight. Are you from Miami or where are you from? I was born in Puerto Rico and I was raised in Lauderdale. Okay, so you grew up in Miami. Uh, did you not hear me say Lauderdale? Lauderdale, ho. Lauderdale, ho. Lauderdale, ho. Get get jiggy with that. So you like a, you a Florida legend. I'm jigging, babe. I'm a I'm a big fan, man. You know, back from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta days because you know I grew up in Atlanta, so I remember season one of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. You know, I just watched your growth from like being a reality star to a successful businesswoman, and you've accomplished so much starting at zero, yeah, to a yeah. hundred. Starting at zero, absolutely. I think that that's the best way to make it when you literally start at zero because it's like you get so much of a harder time. But it's so much more appreciated. And not only that, like, you actually see, like, what you've done from, like, you know, from when you was, like, a child. You know, I, I just think think of those moments when I was in Puerto Rico. And I'm just like, damn, like, I've really came far. And, you know, I'm like, I'm like a, I'm like a story to tell. You right. know, it's you like, like motivation. Yeah, thank you. I feel like, you know, it's hard to, it's hard when I have to mo motivate myself, like, every day. But I think that yoga helps me a lot. Uh, oh, you be doing yoga? I be doing what high, kind of yoga you be doing? High yoga. Hey. Yeah, I do. I high be yoga. doing yoga a little bit. What was that? Did I just get a bell? Yeah, yeah, you got a bell. Ding, ding, yeah, ding. yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, I do. I do big chrome yoga. Yeah, you breathe all the toxins out that you collect throughout, you know, your life in the day. So it's pretty cool. So, you know, just coming from coming from nothing, being here, it's really it's really cool. Did you yeah. ever think you would make it here though? Like like thinking back in the day, you ever think you would be here? Absolutely. So you knew I'm going to be a celebrity one day. Well, no, I, I didn't know I was going to be a celebrity. I just knew I was going to be a superstar because I'm a superstar. You know what I'm right. saying? Being a superstar has nothing. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> being a superstar has nothing to do with being a celebrity. Anybody. I mean, how many people aren't celebrity right now? If you if you fought it too long, like if you literally fought for a ministry, you're a celebrity. That's true. Like you literally. People can like, get famous for anything these days. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it go viral. Get a million views. She's the the world. She's going to Guinness, Guinness World Record. Right. It's like really anybody can be a celebrity. But That's true. <laughs> well, when you, when you know you're like a superstar, right? It's like, okay, I already know I have to work really hard right. if I want to accomplish the things that my heart, my soul, my body, my mind desires. It's, uh, it's, called, uh, it's called manifestation. Manifestation, yes. When I you pray, can manifest anything, man. If you believe it and you speak it and you work hard for it, you can have it, man. When I pray, I don't be like, oh, God, please. God, please help me get rich. Oh, God, please help me get this car. Oh, mm -hmm. God, please help me get this car. No, 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 no. That's not how we pray. How do you pray? Well, you know, I pray like every day I wake up, I pray like what belongs to me will be here. Yes. What is in the universe that is old 
Yes. To the Puerto Rican princes, the Puerto Rican princes will receive today. I'm like the prayer woman that literally prays something good into my life every day. Like, I would not wake up and not write down what's going to happen to me today. Wow. That's like literally living blind, right? Right. I have to write. When I wake up, I have to blind. Or when I go to sleep, because sometimes I'm, my schedule is off. But I'm always writing down, you know, putting out of my mouth, out of my soul, right. out of my brain to the universe. Literally, what's going to happen to be, you know, today, tomorrow. And, and you manifested it like you prayed for where you're at right now and it happened. Well, you know, well, I mean, you know, when I was when I was in Puerto Rico, when I was younger, I didn't really do that. But I was like figuring it out and work hard, you know. But then, you know, as, as I get as I'm on Earth a little longer, I'm like, OK, this is how you do it. Right. Right. And so I just I always knew I, I wanted to be a singer and a dancer. And I started doing Spanish music. I started out with Spanish music before right. I went to do Love and Hip Hop. When I first started doing Love and Hip Hop, I was doing like Spanglish and stuff like that. But my first song was all Spanish. And so, uh, yeah, I always knew I was like a Selena coming up. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> I was like, so what, what made you transition into doing English music? The cabaret. Mm. the cabaret and then do it like it's your birth- b- birthday was literally my last english song i told my husband i'm like i'm not they don't appreciate who i am right as an artist right the, uh speaking the english community because you know i'm black i'm a whole nigga i was right. born in puerto rico but i'm black i i don't say i'm puerto rican i say i'm black so and then I'm puerto are you an afro latina is that what no i'm a black woman that was born in puerto rico okay there we go yeah <laughs> and for the people that don't know jocelyn has had the number one tv show this ain't just a regular TV show. Number one on, on the networks. And you started it in 2020. You had three successful seasons. I think it was uh, 2019. 2019. Yeah, I think it was 2019. Went crazy. I remember October. when it first came out. It was, yeah, it was all October. over social media. 2019. Crazy. And it's just really, you know, I had the idea to do Jocelyn's Cabaret when I was in Atlanta in 2012. And then I just kind of kept it quiet and then just kind of like, you know. Uh, planned it, and then I'm, you know, after me and my husband did the boot camp for We TV. Actually, We TV paid for the pilot, but they thought it was too, you know, too revealing. Too yeah, weird. they were scared of it. Oh, well, you do you think they, they regretted it when they found out it went number one? Well, not really. They came back and licensed it for me, so they. Used oh, it okay, anyway. yeah, yeah. They was like, wait, on second thought, did we have that shit? So I was like, you guys are like, but you know, we shout out to We TV. They're in my family. They always look out for me and my husband. They always call. I just did. I just did fucking college here from the relationships that I have on We TV. So how many shows have you been on? College Hill, you know, Love and Hip Hop, obviously, your own TV show, Jocelyn's Cabernet. I'm on three seasons of Jocelyn's Cabernet, and actually next month I brought some of my homegirls here that's on tour with me. Uh, Whoa, can we get a siren? We doing season four? Well, listen, Give season me a bomb. <laughs> two, two, three bomb. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, look, season four, we, we're going to be filming it next month. Uh, next right month. after season four, we usually... Go on tour. Right Why don't after? we bring on a couple come of... Come on, um, y'all. Come on, come on. So let, let, now, let they're, the they're going to be on season four. I remember seeing them on season they were three. On come season take a seat over three. here. Remember them on season three? Yeah, come sit down over here. Put on the headphones. Come and, on, um, the psychics. They were calling them the psychics because they were like besties. But this is Raven. Why they look alike? They look like... They're they, best friends. Oh, y'all look related. What up, Raven? What up, Diamond? What's, what's up? Hold on. These are my two. These are my two. Okay, so they were on season three of the cabaret, right? Mm-hmm. These are my two ladies that have held. So originally, I went on tour after season three. I went on tour. Shout out to Melissa. She puts all my tour together with Ballistic. I went on tour like... Right after the cabaret with five ladies, and these are the last two that held on through the whole tour with me. Wow. Yeah. Y'all excited for season four? We are super so excited. excited. That's what's up. Now, hold on. Before we get too deep, man, I got a crazy we got a crazy show for y'all. We do something on this show called the outfit check. Now she came up in here looking hella. F- show them the fit. Give us some music. Show them the fit. Tell them what's going on. Hey, we're in Miami. Show them the shoes. Show them the shoes. Oh! Hey! And she got the diamond purse, too. It's $20,000 Chanel purse. Damn, 20 bands. That's a car right there. <laughs> well, not for a lady like that. Did Hubby buy you that drink? We got <laughs> Hubby in the building. He in the back right now, chilling. What up, gang? <laughs> yeah, my, shout out to my list in the back. He's always coming home with a nice purse, but this one I bought myself, so I'm not yeah, going to give that credit. Now, what y'all outfits looking like? They look amazing. Stand up. Stand up. Show body. I don't know why that man Take got that jacket, jacket off. It's fucking here. And oh, shit. Damn, and we are Miami. Y'all Jose ain't showing no titties? Okay. It's 
ski. Well, I wanna... tell, tell, tell him a little bit about what you experienced in the cabaret because I don't really, I don't think, even though the people see us on the on on, on tour, they don't really never talk to you guys because we're always in and out. Of and how did you get on the show? Like, there was so many girls audition. How did y'all make it on? Like, how did that, how did that happen? We auditioned yeah. together. So I feel like me and her put, doing it together. Kind what of y'all do? Out. Like, y'all made, did some tricks and crazy shit? we did like a mashup of our crazy videos. I made her stay up till three in the morning. I was like, we got to do, because the audition required for us to basically do like a two minute solo routine or together. Right. So I was like, we got to do one together. Right. So I And said, they did it right. They didn't, look, they didn't look like cockroaches. They was all right. So you saw them. You I was like, I want like, them up here. <laughs> I saw them and I thought they were great. I thought they were cute. And then also... Through, on camera, they looked like they were going to be fun and excited. And I thought that they really wanted it when I seen the footage right. of them together. So what can people expect for season four? What y'all, what y'all think? Y'all um, going to be whooping ass? I'm not, that's, I'm not letting nobody play with y'all. We got to drop that New York. They, they need to be ready. This is season four. Right. Yeah, I really want to focus on... Because on your first seasons, cabaret. you had Atlanta, Miami, and Las Vegas. We were four B. What city? You got the soundtrack. I got a soundtrack? You have the soundtrack to it. I do? Which one? Yeah, it's the one that you're supposed to wa- play when I walk thing, nigga. You forgot. Oh, shit. Yo. <laughs> Y'all want to beat him up right now or later? Come Hold on. on. Let's Stay jump up. Should we? Now, now, guys, we got an exclusive. Jocelyn has brought her new music. She's going to go that crazy. That new EP. That new EP. And we're going to get into Should we drop it now or should we make him wait? Uh, drop New York. Drop. All right, play it. Play, play the records. We're going to pop this bottle for, for that, okay? Hey. Thank you for the bottle too, sweetie. Of course. This is awesome. This, this, this pop it. But listen, I need to say Opa. Hey, we in Miami. Get some crap stuff. Turn it up. We don't get no louder. Hey. Yo. Hey. Just wanna play games with me, but I'm here to straight I tell you no. Wanna play games with me, but I'm here to straight I tell you no. Just wanna play games with me, but I'm here to straight I tell you no. Wanna play games with me, but I'm here to straight I tell you no. New York, we in the building, baddest bitch to ever do it. Put a rick in my seat, yeah, I run this shit, you know it's bloody bitches. Get on your knees and go and get my money, fifty cent ain't got shit on me. Let your me duro, si no te gusta lo que digo, ves a mi culo. Esta rica, muy vainilla, no yo rica. Hold on, we got ballistic in the building. Hey, hey come over here, man. Get over here, turn around, let me see it. Put the camera on. Hey. This is going hard. Round of applause for Jocelyn. Yo, that's going hard. That's about to kill the club. I wrote the song, but let's say did the beat. Um, it's pretty cool. Every time I go to a new season, I do a new soundtrack. Uh, B Day Vegas, and now this is uh, this is for New York. I That's have to, perfect. Yeah, for I have it. To, yeah, it works. It works. People love it. They 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 love the soundtracks throughout. So basically, you know, it, but basically, uh, the camera race. It's like a competition, right? And I, you know, the girls want they compete to come on tour with me, right. and you know, I thought about the camera race because. I just figured it was like an amazing way for me to showcase the music and for me to just like do everything I want, you know, get the girls to come on tour with me, showcase the music. And, and it just helped me a lot. How many know, girls to, is it? Well, every season I be having like different girls, sometimes like 10, sometimes like 12. So it just depends. Um, but I but but I like six of them go with me on tour, but then only two survived. Because wow. remember, this was the first two. Y'all are the like, survivors. Yeah. Yep. Round of applause for them. They survived. Drop a bomb on them. They Drop a bomb on them. I'm telling you, they just survived. 
And they've been down with me. They support me. They understand me. They know I'm the boss. They know that I gave them money. They, they made a lot of money. Right. They can tell you they sell life changing. Now, like, do you feel like you underrated as a rapper? Like, you go so hard. Do you feel like you underrated? Well, you know, I'm, I don't consider myself a rapper. I consider myself an artist. Because I'm like a, you know, I'm, I'm like a popping bitch, you know? And me doing Spanish music, uh, like Manhattan, the next song, that's like a lot of Spanish and English. Me doing Spanish music, I consider myself like, you know, like like a pop Spanish artist. Right. So I don't feel underrated at all. At all. I have my uh, my following that love my music that come to my tour they have a great time I, every tour that I do is sold out like I have people like New York love me that's why I decided to bring the um, cabaret there be stationary there you know like uh, like a residency like you would do in Vegas when I went to Vegas I did the same thing and now in New York because I've done shows in New York back to back and the girls can tell you it's so packed they love me in New York what I city you like the most New York yeah so yeah. your Detroit. best you get the most love in New York on in the New tour. York and Detroit uh, California. Shout out to New York, Detroit. California, Colorado. New York, Detroit, California. Where else? Baltimore, Dallas. Houston, Dallas. Dallas I mean, is crazy. The biggest states ever show me the most love. I'm surprised because you know a lot of times they fucking boo people. Boo, right. get out of our stage. Get out, bitch. You suck. But they just love me like those cities. Like New York is top. Uh, I would say Houston ne next. No, I or know. Detroit. I would say the. Uh, oh, yes. I would say New York, Detroit, Detroit Houston, Dallas. Dallas. What else, Melissa? So basically but, every but city. New York, but New York, <laughs> York loves me the most. And you know, one thing yeah, I like about her, she's a people's champ. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's a people's champ. You know what I'm but saying? But listen, the fact that they sing my songs from at the top of the lawns is what's un unbelievable. It's been a long time coming. That's the and, best feeling, right? Yeah, because it's been a long time coming when a lot of people doubted you. And it's like, wow, now you actually put an actual cabaret together with some people that actually believe in you, like my husband, my management, my cabaret ladies. And, you know, whether we have the cabaret or not, I will bring them on tour with me. Whether I film the cabaret or not, I'm going to always go on tour and always have them by my side or some of the other girls that's going to eventually be in the tour but uh you know the music for me is just being not only a passion because i'm not passionate about anything in life that much i'm passionate about just uh being a good person being able to take care of my my family uh just you know well, what do you in. enjoy the most like being a producer being an artist being like you know what do you, what do you like the most a tv star or an artist if you had to choose one <laughs> Being, being, a, being an international superstar. Only yeah. because, Cause only, you know how people try to only, put you in a box. Like fuck that. You can do it all, and that's why I tell people: stop putting people in a box. You can sing, you can rap, you can be on TV. Like you can do it all. You know, a lot of times people try to say they only want you to do one thing. And all like, the time, only, only because the, some of the stuff, some of the Spanish songs that I wrote. I was talking to Nori about that the other day. They asked me the same thing because his son was like, "Listen, they listen to Jocelyn in the hood." Mm. And Nori, Noriega was like, "Listen, my son told me." You, when you went to the bathroom, he was like, my son told me that they listened to, they, my son was like, listen, don't be doing all that Googling. Listen to, listen to her music. In right. the hood, they listen to her motherfucking music. Her son, you know, his son, like a, like a, like a younger, like a younger kid, like a right. 21, 22 year old. And so, you know, for me, it's like, I worked so hard to be able to do that. And, and I told him, I was like, you know, it's not that I necessarily have a passion for it. It's just that some of the stuff that I write in Spanish, the way I sing it, the way I, uh, ballistic producer the way I give my all to it I can't listen to certain songs that I write in Spanish because they literally bring me to tears only because it takes me back to Puerto Rico being a young girl right and so that's why it's, I say music because I've been doing music uh, TV for a very long time literally all my teenage years right I started at 23 right doing TV so yeah. it's been my whole fucking life all my whole teenage years you know how is it in Puerto Rico say it again how is it in Puerto Rico how you ever it? go there and like tour there oh yeah I go Puerto Rico, I go to Puerto Rico. I haven't toured in Puerto Rico, but every time I go, they call me the Puerto Rican princess. Everybody loves me. They know me. But I have not been able to do a tour there. 2022 was really hectic for me. I shut the cabaret. I went on tour. I did uh, College Hill. It was a lot. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm a mom. You know, I have a lot going on. So, You're a super uh, mom. I'm a super mom. Yeah. Shout out to Bonnie. So, yeah. Do you, uh, do you plan on having more kids? Yeah, I got to get... My sexy ass husband, another kid. Look at hey, me. how many kid more kids do you want? Probably just like maybe two more. Two more? Yeah. That's what's up. All right, we're gonna have uh, some ballistic babies coming out. <laughs> you know he's gonna be tall. That boy's gonna be tall. Yeah. And strong. Now, so we got the other track. We gotta get into it. We got the Manhattan. I love that song. That actually, when I went to New York to film that video, all the girls that was on the video, everybody, we was in the city. We were we were everywhere, ballistic. We were when like, is it dropping? Next month, my EP drops hey. um, uh, May. Turn up. Play the record. Yeah. yeah. It's so exciting. 
Everybody love this song. The girls is like, bitch, I de Manhattan, like his body, tú estás extraño. Yo te mato, es mi amiga, dime algo, ya he estado. Fue mentiras que me amabas. Pendejazo, tú eres malo, vete de mi vida. No quiero verte. Drop, 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 drop. I dropped your ass on your ass. Drop. Round of applause for Josh Lee. Right there. You I'm about to kill me with this about, new EP. I'm talking about a dude, right? Right. That I'm in Manhattan. Right. In the penthouse. And, I'm, and I wrote it. You know, I write stories. I, kind of, I wrote the cabaret. I write everything. I'm a writer. I told you, you about that. You feeling good. Earlier. You in a penthouse in Manhattan. I'm in the penthouse in, in, in Manhattan. And I, and I called the dude that I'm fucking with. And I'm like, damn, is it true you're fucking with that bitch? I'm like, damn, you wrong for that. I don't, know, I don't ever want to see you again. That's all in Spanish. And then I'm like, drop. Right. Drop, nigga, what? Drop. You know, when I'm Drop. in the studio, but let's do the beat, and I'm like, I'm on his heels writing really quick. So I'm like a quick writer. And then also, like, see, I write the soundtracks for the cabaret, because all my soundtracks and all my EPs, everything I've been dropping for the past, like, three years, it's been for the cabaret. So I kind of know, okay, I'm going to Vegas, I'm going to New York, I'm going to Atlanta, so I'm going to New York. So, you know... He knows we're going to New York. We get that vibe. We kind of it's like a plan, you know. We know what we we know what we're working on. And a lot of artists don't write their own music, you know what I'm saying? So that's dope that you like write your own stuff. Cause like even a lot of major, some of the biggest artists you know, they never wrote a song in their life. It's good to have the tools there for you to be able to you, for you to be able to have it a little bit easier. But for me, especially like starting off as an artist, I like to like give the people who I am for real. Right. I feel like if somebody else write for me, it's not really who I am, right? So I have to right. like, I have to be me. So me writing my own music, I like it. You know, everybody knows it's like, Justin wrote that. Do it like it's your birthday. Like, right. who else going to write that? And now like, like do it like it's your birthday. That. <laughs> that was the big birthday song. That shit was so lit. Now, in the lyrics in that song, you said, baby, I ain't tripping on you. You can do your I thing. Was, yeah. I Is that, that how for, you are? I like- wrote that for Ballistic. Absolutely. I wrote that for Ballistic. I forgot why. Well, we were together when we first got together, you know, like, you know, Ballistic is a Virgo. He's on me a lot. You know, he's, he loves me. Look at me. I mean, why not? I mean, what right. the fuck, right? And so, like, you know, I'm, I'm his... He he take he handles me as as his property, but right. not in a bad way, in a good way. I like it. It flatters me. And so I wrote that for him at the beginning. He made the beat, and I had the beat. I think I had the beat for a while during COVID. And then I had he sent me like ten beats because we we were living together. But you know he sent it to my phone, right. and I'm like I'm just gonna write some music through COVID. And I wrote like I, I probably wrote like twenty five songs during COVID. Right. Some of my best songs in the world. I was waking up at five in the morning writing music, and Crazy. so uh, that's just. You know, and I but was, are the lyrics I true? Born, like, are I, you are you cool with him? Like, doing this thing? Like, you ain't tripping on that? Like, can he talk to other women and or and love? He keep it respectful. Like, how does that work? Well, you know, I I never go on his phone. I never be jealous or anything. I I trust him and I believe in him. Uh, you know, he knows I like women. So we talked about you know having three sons and talked about you know potentially one day. So I don't believe that my husband is going to go cheat on me. I don't really believe that. I, I'm, I'm secure with myself. So like, so you're cool with like, if you bring another woman in the bedroom. Well, we haven't done that yet, but we talked about it. Um, I don't know. We talked about it. He said, he always says out of the country, never like in the States. And I'm like, okay, cool. So yeah, it's, it's like, weird if it's like someone, you know, too much. Like if, if you're in a relationship and you do a threesome, yeah. you always got to choose someone that you don't really fuck with. Like, you know what I mean? It's if it's too close to home, it's weird. Can I get some more? Uh, the yeah, can we can we bring her some more tequila? Oh, yeah, we got a bottle right here. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I trust I trust my uh, I trust my husband, and I'm sure he trusts me. We don't listen. If I wanna if I wanna suck some pussy, then I'm gonna have to let him know. He gotta he gotta be down with the shit. So we we talk about it. You know. But you know what they say? They say the girl has to choose the girl. Oh, so yeah. that's how I messed up because I had my ex girlfriend. She wanted to do a threesome. So I picked the girl, and then that she started crying. It was bad. She yeah, ran out the bad. room. Yeah, that's bad shit. The I, girl always, guys, the girl always has to choose a girl. You got to let her be in control of the situation. Because if you bring a girl, she's going to be like, where you know this bitch from? Exactly. Who is this bitch? Her. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I don't think that the woman or the man should just have a bitch they could call, oh, let's fuck. No, is she like... Out of, out of the country when you go on vacation, we're yeah. just having a good time. And you just say, fuck it, we on vacation. It's, you know, it's our honeymoon or it's our vacation for the year without the kids. You know, you take a vacation with the kids, you take a kids with vacation with your significant other. Then, you know, you can fuck around. You can get fucked up, get high. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> so you're the type of woman, you'll do whatever in the bedroom to please your man. Well, me, you know, me and uh, Ballista being together for like, uh, I think, five and a half years. Man, and that's yeah. a long time. Round of applause for that. 
What's the damn secret, man? Five years, especially in Miami, man. People don't last three months here. Like, what's well, the secret? I, know, I was hearing people say that, but uh, the secret is to that both of the parties has to have to be prepared to take it to take it to that level and to be like uh, one entity. And that's what's the secret. But I think that the secret is that we have great sex because we fuck all night when we want to. But not mm. all the time. Like, okay, so me and my husband like to fuck maybe like once a week, but for all night. We fuck mm. all night. So y'all go crazy yeah, like that session. Yeah, the kid be gone at the grandma house or, you know, at the cousin house and we be in there fucking. But we don't do it every day because we have to take the baby to school every day. We pick her up. We, he has to go to the studio. I have to, you know, go to uh, rehearsals or whatever it is that I'm doing. So we have a lot of work. So And I say this on the show, ladies. Men who are doing business, they don't have time to fuck all day. If your man got time to fuck you all day, he ain't doing shit. Yeah. Because no. niggas, because like we be tired after we get done working all day, we need to go to sleep. Yep. We making money, you feel me? Like, so let's so just, basically, yeah. I think what we do, I think that we, we uh, schedule a night together at least once a week. I oh, think y'all that plan out like a nice night. Yeah, I think that that's what we do. We talk about it. Okay, so when we're going to get together this week and then we kind of plan it. I think that that's how we do because like I said, unless he wants a quickie, which is like, we barely have time. And when he does want a quickie, I'm like, nigga, relax. You're going to get it in two days. We plan this. We're going out of so town. So you don't like quickies? No, I don't. I don't. Because mm. I, cause I like to fuck him all day. Do so y'all like, like quickies? Um, yeah. She don't. What's a quickie? Like, what's the don't. minimum? What's the minimum uh, that's cool? A quickie? Uh, for a man, I feel like it'd be like... Or what's the minimum that you're like, okay, this is fine? No, I'm not doing no quickies with my husband. I need him all night, so... All night, God. Unless he's like, he really need that nut, then I'm not really doing it. Right. It depends. I'm like 30 minutes max on a good day. On a quickie? On a good... Just in general, on a good day. Oh, like, okay. That's like an minutes? amazing day. Oh, okay. I'm like oh. five, I'm like five, ten minutes when yeah. I oh, fuck. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for your girlfriend. No, <laughs> but it's a good five minutes. You know what okay, I'm saying? Good. It's a good a five lot of minutes. Pumping, a lot of pumping. A lot of pumping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so sex you, is great. So sex you would be open to a threesome. It's something that you would be open to. But it'd I mean, have to be a girl that like you don't know from another country. But listen, I would say, I, I don't know, babe. When we have a threesome, I could see you being the girl. I'm like, nigga, if you get the bitch that dick that good, I'm going to fuck your ass up. Absolutely. But you, you better but, give the bitch the dick regular. Don't give the bitch the dick like how you give it to me. And he got to be more with you. Like, he can't pay too much attention to the other girl. No, I'm not lying. I'm going to let him do what he do. Listen. That's that's why you have to plan it to go like outside the country or something. Because it's like that's just like a treat once every fucking five years or ten right. years. But that's you like, know what they say? If they they say if you really like a guy, you really in love with him, you're not gonna want to see him fuck someone else. Like girls would do you, a threesome trust, with a stranger more. Not if you quicker. trust your. I'm married though. Remember, right. I'm not just engaged. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So like I trust, and he he's the father of my kid. Right. He don't want to see his kid hurt. Right. He doesn't want to lose a family for a five minute fucking nut or like satisfaction i right. don't see my husband doing that like no but how is it so let's say y'all going on tour y'all in all these states no tour out the country no tour no work it's vacation only but do you get those guys like let's say when you're going on tour you in new york you in all these places do you get like guys trying to approach you and fanning out and trying to get at you like how, how does that work like uh, guys don't ever really try to talk because you got to remember I go from the dressing room to the stage so they don't even try you okay no so I go from the dressing room to the stage they to can't the back. even get near you not really okay. mm -hmm. they see me on stage and they see the girls on stage they be trying to talk to the girls a lot because also a lot of guys know ballistic and I've been in a relationship for so many years they respect right. ballistic the guys see ballistic oh can I take a picture hi ballistic I love you and Josh right. and so it's more of that than them trying to be disrespectful to him. He's like, like a dangerous guy. I wouldn't want to make him mad. He looks like he can like fuck somebody up. He's, <laughs> he's a nice guy, but I mean, he's you know he's he's known in the streets. You know, everybody know him. Um, right. You know, Noriega was talking about him the other day. Like I've never seen Belissa smile. To you got married to him because right. he's not the smiling type. So it's mostly like with you on tour. These it's mostly like girls fanning out. No, we have guys to come see us on tour. But it mostly be like like the girls going crazy, like the big fans of you, and it be a bunch of guys in on tour. I feel like the guys come with their girlfriends though, because a lot of guys yeah. that when they I bring do like girl, a meet yeah. and greet, they always be like, "Well, you know, I'm here with my girlfriend, I'm here with my wife, or I brought my wife for her birthday, or I brought you know." So a lot of people, a lot of husbands that will bring their wives for their birthdays or the girlfriends or fiancés. I've met a lot of guys still. Pay us for the meet and greet after the show, and they always tell us this story. Wow. And speaking of fans, Jocelyn, we posted that you were going to come on the podcast, and we did a search. We was like, we looking for Jocelyn's number one fan. And we got hundreds of messages. People like, I'm a number one fan. Did you, pick, fan. The, no, did you we pick the right fan? Them. We got Jocelyn's number one fans in the building. Come on in here. 
They got a surprise. Bring it around here. Bring it on this side. Show her the cake. Show the cake to the camera. Hey. Hey. Do it like a girl do that. Hey, hold on. Let, let him sit down for a minute. Let him sit down for a minute. It's her fucking birthday every day. Turn up. Round of applause. Do it like it's your B-Day, baby. Do it like it's your B-Day. Now, hold on. Do it like, like it's your B-Day. Baby. Hey, How y'all feeling? Did y'all play that song on y'all's birthday? It's my birthday month right now, and I'm playing that as the first anthem. Coming hey. in. Happy birthday. When's your birthday? April 19th. Yes. Happy yes. birthday. What sign are you? I'm an Aries. And when's your birthday, Jocelyn? Uh, my birthday's November. I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. When your birthday? August 3rd. Now, she drove so far all the way out here. Where you come from? Back. I came from West Palm Beach. Thank you guys for coming. Of course. Thank you for having us. What's up? Talk to me. What's good? Oh, my gosh. I actually need my phone because I have questions. I have like two questions. Well, she said she she got a question. We can't get no phones. Let them do her out her hands. Keep the phones (laughs) away. Oh, oh, okay. What's your questions on? I don't know. I just want to ask you, like, what would you tell to young mothers that are in the industry coming up? Good question. You know, who don't have, like, a lot of support, if that makes sense, like, I know that you've been through a lot by yourself and it means a lot to me to know how did you get through it? Because I'm going through a lot and I need to know. Are you oh a single gosh. mother? Yes. I Round of applause to her, yes. single mother. Round. That's a good question. You hurt my heart. Yes. I don't want you to bring me tears to my eyes. I'm having oh, a great sorry. time. Fuck. Sorry, What's your sorry. name? I'm Naya. Naya Shakira. How old are you? I'm 21. So how old is your baby? He's one. Okay. All right. Good luck. Good luck with the baby because yes. you go, you go, you need luck and you need, um, how do you say it? I'm looking for the right word. You need, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Thank you. Perseverance. Perseverance. That's the word I was looking for. Thank Round of applause ballistic back there. No, that was, that was him. I want to bring him up so bad. He's like, oh, I'm chilling in the bag. I'm chilling. So per- <laughs> perseverance. Say it again. Perseverance. Perseverance. That's what you need. A lot of times, you know, us as young black ladies, we have a lot of talents. But we just don't have the people behind us to support us, like your mother, or your mm-hmm. father. Like I, you know, I have I have a mom and I have a stepdad and all of that. But I, I think they were young and they had too many kids, so I mm-hmm. didn't get any support. So I was running away like at fifteen, yeah. sixties, Lauderdale. Oh, y'all know I'm from Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah. I'm always screaming hot, Lauderdale. So I feel like um just um you know when, when you when you you you're very young, so you're not gonna understand what I'm telling you to get mm-hmm. a little older. You guys are very young. You know, you're going to, you're very young. Unless you really listen and capture what people are telling you that knows what they're telling you, you're going to have a hard time. Right? Yeah. So uh, the first thing you should do is the way, you know, the way you pray, you ask for, it's not, you tell the universe what you, what, what, what they, what he owes you. Mm-hmm. You tell the universe, don't pray like you, you know, at church with the pastor every, every, no. every weekend. Don't, don't pray like yeah. that. You know, you tell the universe what you need. You pray. You put it on a mood board. Mood boards are very important for young mm-hmm. black girls. A lot of young mm-hmm. black girls don't know anything about mood boards. I've been doing mood boards, you know, since like I was, a vision board, like a vision yes. board. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I call it like mood board. I want to do a vision board. You never yeah, done one. I never done one. one. You gotta do, you one. Need to do one. It's very important. It's very important for you to vision and envision and dreaming everything that you want. Right. As far as the kid, you have to really like involve your the baby daddy, the moms, everybody mm-hmm. that's the family of your kid, involve them and put them, give them responsibilities. See, a lot of yeah. time as mothers, we don't give the people that we need to give responsibilities to. Responsibility. And so, yeah, you have to give your baby daddy responsibilities, your mom as a grandmother, mm-hmm. his mom as a grandmother, the aunties, everybody, the brothers, the sisters, everybody's responsible for that kid. You didn't make the kid by yourself mm-hmm. and you need to motherfucking let them know that y'all niggas owe me. Mm-hmm. Be responsible for your kid too. Be responsible right. for, right. for for Take your care kids. of your kids. Round of you know, applause like, for that. Take yeah, care of your don't kids. Just, don't put that on you. I, 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 yeah. I, and I had to grow out of this. I had to grow out of like putting all the responsibilities on myself. Mm-hmm. I now give everybody that's in my surrounding areas responsibilities. That's like right. if you around me, nigga, you got to, res- whether it's a woman or a man, yeah, it's a responsibility that you have to take. Because I'm a respectful young lady and I had to do it myself because mm-hmm. my, mom, my mom didn't teach me. My sisters, nobody taught me I had to learn myself. So now I have to give myself the respect to give this motherfucker's responsibility right. to be able to uh, help me out so yeah. I can accomplish my dream. Because you're a young lady. Yes, you laid there and you made a baby, but, but not yourself. Right, that baby right. got family and blood. You're not the only blood that that exactly. baby got. So that would probably be the best advice that I have. Yeah. And uh, and I think you'll be all right. It's going to be yeah. hard. Yeah. But you're beautiful. Both of you guys are beautiful. Thank it's not you. that hard for you to really dream. Like I came from Puerto Rico with nothing. I have yeah. fucking my dad died of a 
overdose of drugs. Mm-hmm. All my fa- a lot of my family members from my dad's side right. were, you know, they 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 died of uh, drug use. Yeah, and man, so here, from so. where I come from, you know, it's like nothing. Like I was walking around without shoes and stuff like that. And so for me to be able to get out of that lifestyle without nobody's help but me. Mm-hmm. And as I got to be in the universe longer than my husband and, and my management right. and stuff God like that, you. you know, but at first you got to do a lot of things like on your own. So that would probably be the best advice that I could give you. That's realistic. Mm-hmm. That's going to really actually help. You kind of didn't receive a lot of backlash in my opinion from the public. I think it was really more so from those that were in your circle, like mm-hmm. people who knew you, people who worked with you prior to your, your, you know, your rise. And I just want to know how did you get through you know, knowing that the same people who you was down with, feel me, like, they folded when you got there. Like, they, the main ones dragging your name, the main ones carrying, we got to slaughter Jocelyn. Like, they mm-hmm. harder than anybody in the public. Like, how did you get through that? I feel like a lot of times when people do wrong by you, and even though they've been on your side, they, um, you know, they feel some type of way, like, wow, she's really talented. Mm-hmm. She really can make it. And I thought it was a game. But when you really show them that you're focused, that you re- really can make it, mm-hmm. you know, they'd be afraid that you're going to leave them, yeah. right? But mm-hmm. if you do what you need to do, you won't leave them. You support them and, and, and everything will be supportive and it'll be like a circle. Mm-hmm. We go back and forth. Everything is like a family, right? Yeah. And so You ever I been feel- in a relationship where people try to hold you back? Mm-hmm. You well, know, because I mean- some guys... I know personally, I heard a story. A lot of guys will try to hold back a beautiful woman yeah, that's they talented be they because, be like, they're afraid, like you said, that, like, mm-hmm. when you blow up, you're going to leave them. Yeah, but whether they, whether a man try to hold you back or not, you, you as a woman have respect for yourself. You have to balance. Yeah. Right. So that has, you know, like, I feel like, you know, I feel like if you give a man or a woman or anybody the opportunity to just drag you and, like, keep you back, obviously, when they get upset, they're going to do that, right? Yeah, but if you if you fight and, and, and stuff like that, I feel like it's always... Look, when you watch shows that people get killed, it, it be always the husband, right. the wife, yeah. or the, like, the right. cousin, the or, like, right. the mom, or the daddy, the brother. So it be, like, your immediate circle, because they be the ones that be, like, super mad Hating outside the of the... The people from the outside, right? Mm-hmm. They be like super family now, your own family or your your circle. So believe in yourself yeah. and there's nothing that you will believe. And you will literally ignore everybody. I literally mm-hmm. ignore yeah. everybody for so many years. I and I, I, I ignore and I believe in myself. And Round now, of applause right. for that. You know, and, and I think that that's what got me to where, where I'm at, to where I finally got successful with doing the stuff that I do with my career, with anything I ever wanted to do in my life is by really just believing in me and ignoring the the people that were basically bad for me or feel some type of way. So did you have like family and friends that didn't believe in you that discouraged you? I feel like all family members kind of don't believe and they discourage because they yeah. are not doing it. And so I, I feel like they kind of like, they, they, it's like a, it's like the yin and the yang, like love and hate. They right. want you to, but they don't want you to. It's right. like, it's like, it's like a uh, straddling the fence. Like a- do and you cut them off or you just love them from a distance? I, I Listen, one thing about me, I don't cut anybody out from my family. I just, I focus on work and I'm not paying them, pay, paying them no attention. If they need me, I'm there to support them because I have to do that as a daughter. So you still, or, like, you cut checks to your family like, yo, I got you. Not, not like, just to pay bills, but, like, if they really need. No, I don't pay nobody's bills, but, like, if you know if my family need me, I'm yeah, going to always support. Right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, but also, only because I have it. Right. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't do it. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to take away from me to do for them because I have to make sure that I respect yeah. myself. You come first. I, yeah, I have mm-hmm. to make sure that I, I have a kid. I have to take care of my kid. I got a husband. So, yeah, I'll take care of me for like I'll make sure you're good first. Yeah. And then I'm and that's like, true because if you, you got to make sure you're good first because yeah. if you're not good, then you, how can you help someone else? Exactly. Now, now what about you? Now, I know you got some questions. Uh, what you want to ask Jocelyn anything? Yes, I do. Okay. Talk so, in the mic. Don't be shy. Okay. Sorry. What was the transition like with VH1 to Zeus Network? Uh, the transition was basically when I left VH1, I was mm-hmm. doing Love and Hip Hop for like six years, six seasons or whatever. You know, I was like, damn, I need to get my own show. I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. this shit is like this. I got to go. I'm so like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you thank you, man. You. Round of applause. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. Yeah. And then I always had, uh, I've always, before I started doing Love and Hip Hop, I, um, always kind of had this thing in my mind where like, you know, when I was a little girl, I wanted mm-hmm. to perform. I wanted mm-hmm. to sing. I wanted to dance. I started like doing Spanish. That's my first language. I do Spanish 
music and I just I, I always thought I was like Selena. No damn well I ain't nowhere near. I ain't no damn well I can't say nothing like no Selena. But Yo, that I, movie is so sad. Like yeah, I, I love like, that movie. I, I got so mad at that movie. Like and look who it was. It was her. It's always manager. someone in your circle. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's her I, I always thought I was Selena in Puerto Rico when I was like a jit. I would mm-hmm. come into the house. I'm dancing. As you should. Everybody's like, bitch, you is not Selena. I'm you knew you. You just knew you was gonna be a star. I'm Selena. Leave me alone. Déjame tranquila. Yo soy Selena. Como la flor de tanto amor. That was like, girl, <laughs> you did, girl. So like, I always thought I was Alina in in my parents' house in Puerto Rico when I was like five or six or seven. I was like a jit, right? And so then I was like, shit, I'm Jocelyn. I love her. But then I, you know, started doing my own thing. So kind of like, kind of like, I knew always in my life that I wanted to do something big with myself. So eventually, obviously, I had to leave Love and Hip Hop because I need right. to showcase my true talents. Yeah, it's you know, and then, evolving. It's a yeah, it's I'm like, shit, evolves. I gotta get the fuck it's away from here. That you know, so just doing the cabaret just. Allow me to like showcase the music and then the talent and give of the girls course, opportunities yeah. to, you know, kind of the girls that come from where I came from in the yeah. past, the stripper, uh, the the stripper clubs or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. I just, it just, it went hand to hand. Yeah. And so like when I left Love and Hip Hop, I was like, well, I do my own show, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how the transition went. And it was great because now I have control like, on my own show. And then I give young mm-hmm. ladies like yourself opportunities yeah, to. Would you redirect uh, um, like, if you were to come back to do your own show, mm. would you ma- like? Would you consider making it just about Jocelyn, just about you, and like, like you know, like something like keeping up the Kardashians, if that makes sense? Like, I think we are more so interested in like. I know a lot of people ask you, me that. I know like, a lot of people ask me that, but you know what I tell them? Like, my my music career literally just got started. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that my own show, but I have to really fulfill my, my dreams and my desires that I, mm. or, or, or what I owe to the little girls like you or your yeah. kids or what I owe to you. Cause I came from where you at. Right. Exactly. right. Or where you're trying to get away from. What right? advice would you you're give to yourself at 21? Right. Like That's, if you could give yeah. your 21 self advice, what would you tell yourself? I was awesome at 21. At 21, I, <laughs> I know you because, was lit. Well, only because I'm going to tell you only, only because I was really nice and really naive. And I think the guys love that. Yeah. And like me being nice and naive when I was stripping at 21, 22, I used to get everything from them guys. Cause I was really naive. Cause I was really nice. Right. But yeah. they never really tried to fuck on me or like drag me yeah. out there. Guys, literally all guys was really super nice to me when I was mm-hmm. a stripper. Mm-hmm. And so at 21, 22, 23, before I started doing love and hip hop, you know, 19, 18, I had the best yeah. times of my life. I went wow, to Africa yeah. a few times. Yeah. I went to Canada. I was shopping. So I you was having I, fun. I, because I got Taking lucky. I think of. because I'm such a good person in my heart, mm. the universe gave me yeah. right. greatness. The right. universe has right. always, even though I've been through a lot yeah. and, you know, a lot of, I came from like uh, a lot of drugs in Puerto Rico and stuff like that mm-hmm. with the family members yeah, and just the, mm-hmm. the, where I grew up at. I think because in my heart, I was so pure and I was a, a good God itself. child. Right. I've always been itself. like, you know, Given like, yeah, I went through a lot, but okay, cool. I've never got molested. Nobody ever stuck a dick in me and raped me. Mm-hmm. You know, I got, so I got fucked nice. along, but I've never got raped. Mm-hmm. I've never got nothing crazy Rape where it's like, it fucked my mind up. Because you, you know, you started off as an exotic dancer and you blew yeah, up into this huge my star. Choice, I believe, what was right? like, well, that was my choice. That was did, my choice. For the people that don't know, how did you get your first big break? Well, I was dancing in Onyx and I met Stevie J. I met Stevie J in Onyx and then he took me to Mona. Mm. So that was when I was like, uh, when I was like 23. And so for me, I've always had like good teenage years because I kind of like wait, I kind of like wait for like stripping, Mm -hmm. hanging out, going out the country and then going straight to that. But also I was always focused knowing in my little pretty heart that I always wanted to be like Selena when I was younger. And then I, and I was like, shit, I need to figure out how to be like Jocelyn. Right. right? And so in my heart, I always had that. So it was kind of easy to transition because I was kind of focused the whole time Mm -hmm. to be able to, to, uh, do what my heart desire basically do you feel like you kind of responsible for the success of love and hip hop because like you're the, like you you and Stevie J were like the first relationship to really just go crazy you feel like you're responsible kind of for the success no, of the brand no I don't feel like I'm responsible for the, for the success of love and hip hop I feel like love and hip hop did what it needed to do for me for me to be able to do the cabaret and own my own show mm-hmm. and give other girls opportunities. I feel like everybody got what they deserve. They got what they needed. I got what I needed. And I don't really feel like I'm responsible for it because they were going to do it without me or not. Like I wasn't even supposed to be a cast member. I just got lucky. That's crazy. And happy to be brought up to, you know, to the show. And then I, and then then I worked. So So it wasn't like, cause I'm going to be honest. 
her on Love and Hip Hop was like. We all know she stole the show. I like all, I like know. her on Love and Hip Hop more than anybody else. <laughs> no one else. knows, we this know. It's my personality. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Your but personality was yeah. like, it put it on the map. It was the energy. It was just, right. you know, how powerful she truly was and how her intentions, like she said, were from the beginning. It just, it just vibrated and it radiated and now this is where we're at. Like I think, and everybody did their fucking job in like, hip hop, right? Yeah. So like everybody's yeah. gonna do the thing. It's not gonna be one everything without, went perfectly. Yeah, it's not to go one the way it went. Other, right? But you know, because I'm like the loud mouth, Jocelyn, yeah. I think I'm that bitch, and blah blah blah. It was kind of one of those things. Like right. this bitch, get up on earth. She it thinks she's all keep that. It but that's just my personality. Right. It you kept know? it relevant. Yeah. That's, right. that's it's like what the fuck, you know? So mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things. But I definitely feel like it would not be no Jocelyn and Scabaray without loving hip hop, for sure. Facts. And that's respect, literally. Did you have any uh, another one last question one for last Jocelyn? Question: Are we getting a season four? Oh, yes. you you missed it. She already yes. told us season oh, four is coming yes. soon. Okay. So look, if you guys want to try out for season four, no. Oh, sh- Respectfully, why? why I love you so much. You scared? I'm so scared. Why? <laughs> because I'm. I All right, I got it. You scared? Let me bring somebody. Uh, I will be behind you. Come here, Raven. Here. Where's Raven? Raven and Diamond, come <laughs> tell her how amazing. When we're going to it, she they said came she's up here on scene. I wasn't scared till like, the first episode when she walked in, but it turned me on. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, you mean you got turned on by her? You heard yelling at her. She's us. so yeah. petty. I love it. <laughs> now, you know, it's, it's no secret that you do like girls. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's no secret. how old were you when you first had your first experience with a girl? Well, I think I like, I knew pretty young that I like girls. Like, maybe like, I say like, when I started thinking girls was cute, I say like, 13, 14. I said it being like, mm-hmm. girls were cute. Right. Mm-hmm. And then when I got a little older, then I started, you know, like when I started stripping, I started, you know, messing around. But I think that I found out pretty young, like 15, that I thought that girls were cute. Right. I thought guys were cute too. And then I was like, shit, girls are cute what too. What made you want to do a cabaret? Like, how did that come about? Yeah, how did you think of the whole yeah, idea? Like, like, the concept was, like, you trail, you, yeah, like, you, op- like, you were the first one to really do a show, like, how right. you got it. Valley real life. Right. Right. Shout out to P Valley. I did P Valley to uh twenty twenty two. It was yeah, it was yeah. amazing. I love P Valley, uh Patrick and yeah. all of them. Shout out for yeah. having me How's there. The experience on that as well. It was great. It was it was a great experience. I'm not really like I don't really care to act too much, mm-hmm. but you know, the camera loves me, so it's not <laughs> yeah. that hard. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask uh, you a serious question. Would you recommend stripping? I mean, listen, if you I haven't been, I haven't stripped in such a long time, so I don't really know how the clubs are. When I do go to the clubs, I mm-hmm. feel like guys do spend money because I be watching them. I'm like, they, they, oh, they, they be throw money. money. Yeah, they, yeah, they throw money. money. So change, time, I feel change. like if you have a plan and you could really save money, then you could do it. If not, then don't do it because you'll be wasting your time. You'll be just working yeah. to spend the money. Yeah, like I know some girls who like dance and they just dance forever and no plan. And then I know, like, I had an ex-girlfriend. She danced, mm-hmm. but she used it as a stepping stone. Like, she saved her money. She started a business, and she ended mm-hmm. up coming up. Yeah. So it's like, like she said, it's all about having a plan. Yeah, when I was 23, yeah, right. I was already like, shit, I'm getting out of the club. That's how I started doing Living Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. I actually met a producer. He brought me to Stevie, and he worked like that. And then at 23, I'm in Mona, and then I'm in Love and Hip Hop. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like you got to try to, like, at a young age. My daughter's six, and I told my husband today, I'm like, man, because Bonnie builds and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they have a coding class in uh, school. And I'm like, mm-hmm. she needs to go to the coding class because she needs to figure out if she's going to go to NASA. Because she says she wants to be an astronaut. Aww. I'm like, are you going to NASA? Astronaut. And, and then Ballistic is like, babe, she's, she's only six. Yes, she's six. She's old enough to know what she wants to He's right. like, you're right. She's going to be up enough. on the moon. Do it like yeah, a girl. I'm like, day. <laughs> <laughs> she, she loves my music too. She's always, I'm like, girl, relax. Mm-hmm. Don't take that part. Sure. So yeah, I always, she's six, but I always encourage her to really know what she wants to do. If you want to go to NASA, you need to go work mm-hmm. now. She built amazing. The girl have seen them she builds yeah. amazing like she's so building cool. yeah stuff, so. i want to say something she's about that too i really think great. you're an amazing mother you remind me of my mom a lot Round my mom is really Jocelyn, like, amazing mother. my mom supports everything she would have been here right now shout out to mommy when she sees this but yeah you know i really really love i love that part of you like i just that's why i mentioned about maybe if you were to come back i'm for the cabaret as well like Shoot, I think you should have them all. Like, have a show for you, have a show for this. Because my manage- manager told me that this morning, right, Belissa? She told me that this morning. She's like, Jocelyn, when are you gonna be ready to film your own show? And I'm like, Yeah. Well, like, kind of follow you around, just your like, life. Exactly highlight what she's saying. Family. My manager told me that this morning, highlight and I was like, Relax. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it because you know I'm. I can see her keeping up with Jocelyn. I can see that. Keeping up with Jocelyn. Jocelyn cannot keep up with Jocelyn. Okay. 
I can't keep up with myself. You know, like raising Bonnie or something, you know. Right. Well, raising round of Bonnie's a, a job, girl. She be down to her work <laughs> in my ass. Right. Well, round of applause to you, lovely ladies, man. Thanks Thank so you guys for, for coming, coming to see me. Thank you so and, much. And, and I'm happy that you girls actually ask me questions that matters. Of because, course. Because, like, a lot of people always like, you know, Jocelyn, why you don't do interviews? Why you don't talk? Why you don't do this? Why you yeah. don't do that? Yeah. I said, because motherfuckers no, no, no. don't listen. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Niggas don't listen. I'm right. sitting up here telling you all my... So that's why, like, with my Spanish music, I put it there on paper, and I know that the little girls in the world, they're going to hear that, mm-hmm. and they're going to get it. And so, cause, like, you got to be tricky about giving information out, because people just, they 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 hear you, they but then they go out this other you. ear, and right. it's like, damn, I sat up there and just gave you my heart, and, and right. really gave you what I've been through. I've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. For me to be able to give younger girls an advice because I went through it and I really and they really see me on TV for the last 12 years right, see me right. what I've been through crying fighting praying yeah. you right. know uh, working on the music and people turning me down and stuff yeah. like that you guys have seen that I've done something that I always say I could do and that's more important than any anything because you guys have been seeing me. I'm, I'm yeah. leading by example. Right. right. And your story is from right. rags to riches. So like <laughs> you're an example to show like a lot of young girls like look she made it. She used to walk around barefoot. She I had mean, no you support. Right you said right now you re- help. You kind of raise yourself. Yeah. So it's a lot of girls out here who may not have that family support, who may and have raised themselves. Yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yourself and, yeah, and, 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 and the thing you need to do is stay away from drugs as much as you can. Mm-hmm. I have my oh, party yeah. days. I've done a lot of drugs. I love it. Shit. Yeah. Party like <laughs> <laughs> but, but I got with my husband and he really like, nah, we ain't doing this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I've cleaned, yeah. I've cleaned myself a lot, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Not just because of him and stuff like that, but because of Bonnie and because I want to be a better person. If I really want to fucking grow and be one of the greatest Latin superstars, musicians or actresses or whatever I want to do in my life, I need to have control of my life. And so, uh, you know, I love the fact that you guys ask me those questions because it's, it's, it's very important for younger girls to really hear the girls like me that that been out here doing what we've been doing and, and give you hope. Cause yeah, all I you. had, yeah, all no, I had was fucking hope. Like I'm hoping and fucking praying no, that I could. Did you think you about know, giving up at one point? Real. I, th- I still think about giving up to this day. Right. Yeah, of course. But, we all but, got those feelings. Like, yeah, but not, not literally like anymore. Cause mm-hmm. I've decided like in my life now, I've decided that whatever I do, I'm going to do. There's no right. turning back. Yeah. So once I think once you decide that and you and you do it, then you're not going to turn back and you're going to do it. It comes with a lot of tears and a lot of suffering and a lot of mm-hmm. everything. But what that means? A lot of losing friends. Je- and family. You know, if you're a if you're a, a, a Bible fan, Jesus, Jesus went through it. Yes. I'm not. Yes. I mean, I believe in God. I'm not saying I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in God, but I'm more like I'm more like a prayer of like the universe, yes. not necessarily. Meditation. Yeah, meditation because I do a lot of yoga now necessarily like the bible and stuff like that yeah i go to church you believe and in a do, law of attraction do, yeah mm-hmm. and i believe in the good god is there is a yeah. good god somewhere right i'm not mm-hmm. god was down, looking but, out for you but Absolutely. like if you think about it what jesus what jesus went through like whatever i'm not a we bible i'm not a bible thumper right yeah. but i have to speak the language that people get the people mm-hmm. understand so yeah. if he went if he went through it Jesus then you have to yesterday right. was Easter. She went through some he, stuff, ro- right? he died and rose we as well can die and rise again yeah, yeah so you have to always think like you know some of the biggest people have been through things but you you'll get through it and, and that's so dope though hard. too that you mentioned that you know you actually yeah. got with someone that like bettered you and i tell this yeah. to girls like if he's not better in your life and helping you, you're not with the right one. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there are guys that can come in and just be toxic. And you ever like, you know what I mean? You go but like see, this. No, see, you're supposed to be going up. Exactly. How, can, how did you know? you know that this was your husband after oh, but let's going say, through so much? Girls long. sell dreams too. Y'all sell yeah, dreams exactly. too. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I ain't yeah. going to say yeah. guys yeah. the only ones. Girls yeah. be selling exactly. dreams. We do. We you do. ever sold some dreams? Of course. Right. That's how I got my husband I saw the dream with this good put. No, now hold on <laughs> b- b- before they go I want to ask you one la- so, one question okay. what's one thing you regret or do you regret anything about no. your journey no people they ask me that they, uh, Nori and them ask me that in Dream Champs nothing I don't regret anything okay. if I didn't go through everything I went through I would never be here now and it was hard times but I made it everything and I made was, you who and you I, are and I, was, and I was obviously a good person because my heart my soul my my embodiment everything about me got me the universe the universe gave me good things right. good and karma I give, yeah I give That's the universe karma. good things I put out good things I, round I never of applause to that yeah, one yeah. thing one thing you should do you should never do as a person like I feel like you, the, the minute you put out hate to the universe I don't care the minute you put out one little piece of hate you fuck like yeah. me I love everybody and I have people around me that really didn't appreciate my love and my energy and my greatness and my uh 
my goodness. And so I feel like when you have the people, uh, the people around you that's not good, that's a problem too. You have to be. You a gotta good, have a good. Yeah, you have good to be people good. What I mean, when I mean good, like I mean good people. You have to be good within the inside, mm-hmm. and then the people around you have to be good. Because if you have the bad people around you and you're bad within the inside, it's like a rotten apple. Yeah. Every, everything gets rotten. Yeah. So right. you kind of have to be like just good. I feel like when you're a good person inside your heart, everything just mm-hmm. just comes out, and you get what you give the is universe. what you get. That's right. Yeah. Round of applause Literally. for that. Right. Give Jocelyn a hug. We got something special for y'all too later on after the show. I got something special for you guys. Yes. I am so auditioning for you. For you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Right. You can sit right there. Listen, before they leave, I got something for them. Right. We got something for y'all. Y'all stick around. Now, I got to ask you, you know, being a rapper, being a singer, just being a superstar yourself, you know, being a creative individual, who is your favorite female rapper if you had to choose someone? Uh, okay, let's see. Or can I ask you three, if you had to choose one, who would you say is the best between these three? Cardi, Nikki, or Megan? I think they all are great in their own right. I wouldn't choose one against the other. I think that all three of them have really shown what they do, how powerful they are, how successful they are, how beautiful they are, how much talent they have. There's no comparison. All I... I I it, it, deeply in my heart, I feel like they all equally have made greatness. They have equally made um, uh, uh, this money. Right. Equally made history. Right. They have and equally, females rappers winning like they yeah, they, they winning more than the male rappers, rappers now. now. Right now, they equally females y'all winning more than the yeah, guys. They, they're equally like super fucking amazing. Right. Like dope. And then you know, Cardi has built a family. She's got children. She's got a husband. And, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, she has built a family. Right. She's got children. She's got a husband. It's a popular now to have a family. Yeah. And uh, and then, of course, uh, Megan Thee Stallion has, has a, uh, a relationship. And I'm sure she'll have some kids soon. So, yeah, all of them. Are, for me, honestly, I would not pick one in front of other. Like, equally, they deserve. Who would you collab with if you had to choose a female rapper? If you had to choose one, who would you collab with? I would collab with with any of the female rappers that would love to collab with me. Like, I love them all. Right. I have a, I have the remix of Do It Like It's Your ba- Birthday with one of the biggest rappers out in the game. I'm not going to say her name, but she's, uh, yeah, she's in the remix of uh, Do It Like It's Your Birthday, just her and I. So that'll be coming wait, out. hold on. I got to hear that. I can't wait yeah, to hear that. <laughs> that'll be coming out. That'll be coming out a couple of months. She's going to be doing Coachella. So after she comes back, we'll be doing the video, but she's already on the remix. Is she someone I just named or someone else? I'm not, I just said I ain't telling you. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about Ice Spice? I love Ice Spice. Her and I communicate communicate through uh through uh, DM and stuff like that. Right. I think she's great. She I, came I like, up. I like her. I, I think she's yeah. dope. Uh, and I really I like how she'd be sliding on the beat. Right. Because she just really be sliding on the beat. You know what I'm saying? She's Can dope. we play another record? It was one record in particular, the way you were sliding. <laughs> Let's get right. Let's get right. Or you were sliding. Let's get right. It's got to be let's get right. I the like this. One? The fast one? Oh, yeah, the original one. I like the original one. Let's get right. Let's get paid. Let's get all over this money. Let's get right. Let's get paid. Let's get all over this money. Let's get right. Let's get paid. Let's get all over this money. Let's get all over this money. Let's get all over this money. Guys wanna freak every night of the week. Gotta cut the check, you know what I mean. But you wanna play, but we gotta get paid. Gotta get that money, gotta take care of the kids. Gotta have fun every night of the week. Depending on where we going, I'm gonna be your little freak. Try me if you want, I'm gonna fuck your little freak. Hey, 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 like, hey, yeah. Fuckin' with yeah. you, wanna have a good time. Yeah. Let's fuck around yeah. and do it all night. Hey. I just put the next in this on white. Fuck it all night like an acrobat. Bitch, you saying shit, but whole century. Fly to the bar and get some dick. Come right back and go all night. Bye, how much same morning time? Give it up for Justin. <laughs> Now, hold on. I got I to gotta ask you, Jocelyn. Now, you know, everybody watching this, you got a lot of people from Miami all over the country and the world. Now, I know you've been in your relationship for a long time. I want to ask you, because we asked some fans, like, some questions. How did you know your husband was the one? Uh, I mean, you know, of course, oh, shit, I just hit myself on the chin. <laughs> That's how he do with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you knew, like, he was slanging it on you, and you just like, yo, okay. Pat, bitch, get slapped. I'm marrying That's this how thing. I knew I was going to get married with that nigga. He slapped me with the dick a few times. <laughs> 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 ah, where's the dick? Shit. <laughs> it was out of my eye. Um, I don't know. I th- you know, I think that Ballistic and I were meant to be for however long we are. Ho- hopefully, I'll stay with him for a long time. I, you know, look, I, you know, can I tell you something? I really think the men... 
should want to be the woman be with the woman more than the wom- woman should want to be with the man. Cause I feel like it, the woman feels that love that he, that man is never going to let you go. Like that's the feeling that a woman should have. Like to feel like the man that you get that, you know, he never, you know, the feeling that I get with my husband is like, I feel like he's never going to let me go. Like right. no matter what, like he going to always, not if I like cheat or do weird shit with no niggas and, you know, be riding niggas sticks and doing all that. Not, not right. that I'm saying like, if I'm a good woman to my husband, right. Right. He would never leave me. Is what I'm saying. Right. And I feel like that with ballistic. I feel like he's always been like that. But I just feel like I'm so like, I'm not like naive or anything, right? I just feel like he loves me so much because he knows I love him too. We may love when we have sex. We don't just be fucking. We actually may love. We be kissing. For okay, hours. so what's the difference and, between fucking and making love? You know, when you make it love, you like kissing your 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 significant other. You kissing them. You loving that them. That kissing shit is hot. I like kissing. It's yeah, well, you know, on. you don't kiss everybody unless you really love them. Like, yeah. you're like yeah, right? Yeah. If you don't love them, you're not gonna stick your tongue in it. Right. Like, like you got like, you got girls that will fuck you, but they won't kiss you. Exactly. And you got yeah. girls that'll fuck you and they won't cook for you no breakfast either. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Because, like, I've had girls, like, will fuck me, but then I'll be like, make me dinner. And they be looking like crazy. I'm like, damn, so you can fuck me but can't make no dinner? Because that like, special I gotta shit. Go. You ain't married right. to me, nigga. Bye. <laughs> so I just feel, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like when my husband and I made love, it's like I feel like I'm going to be with him forever. I, now, I don't know if we're going to be together forever, right? I feel like I, we are, but I could be wrong. So I knew, I don't know. I knew. Every day he shows me that he's the one. So it's like it, it was five years, five and a half years ago, and then it's now. Right? So, what, so what's your relationship with Stevie J? Did he give you a blessing? Like he give you a blessing? He didn't have to give me any blessings because you know I, I don't have no beef with Stevie J. But I mean, you know, we never be married on paper. We never been, um, you know, we we we're cool because of Vani, of course, that they have a relationship, and him and Ballistic got a relationship. So but, you think he's happy for you? I mean, if I feel like it's happy for me, him and Ballista communicate, you know, uh, they talk on the phone, they, they been places together. I feel like, you know, Stevie was married for a long time. Stevie was married before I got, I was married to Ballistic or before I even got with Ballistic. So, uh, I feel like Stevie and I just ended up so long. We be, we haven't been together in fucking years, you know, since I was pregnant with Bonnie. So it's been literally six years. And so I just feel like, uh, I feel truly in my heart, I feel like it's happy for me that I find someone that really cares for me and take care of his daughter. It's been plenty of times where Stevie, you know, got on the phone with Ballistic and I've heard him tell Ballistic, thank you for taking care of my daughter. Thank you for taking so good care of Bonnie. He's done it plenty of times. And I've heard right. him say that to my husband on the phone. And so, or in, in person. And so I know that, uh, I feel like he's happy now. And I know back in the day there were rumors. It was a lot of drama, a lot of rumors. There were rumors going around that, you know, people were saying Stevie J could be gay. You may have, you know, spoke on that. What made you say that's like Stevie J could be gay? Uh, I, you know what? I, I mean, he's 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 had a lot of pussy. So, you know, uh, I think, you know, listen, I think that Stevie is a free man, but I definitely feel like he loves pussy and he loves women. I don't think I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to use the gay word, you know, with Stevie. And plus, Stevie and I are so cool. Like, I would never disrespect him now with you know, calling him uh, uh, his name. I know he was married for a while with uh, with Faith. And so, you know, I, I think, you know, I think, I think, actually, I think that I like Stevie now more than I've ever liked him as as far as like... Sometimes you being, can like someone as better as, like, as a friend from as afar. As far as him being a person, like he right. became a better person. And I don't know if he has anything to do with, you know, me being married to someone like Ballistic that he respect and he knows and he talked to and he's been knowing. Uh, Ballistic and Stevie met each other before I was with ballistic through some mutual friends you know friends so uh i think that you know i think so to clear the record stevie J is not he don't get down he's not gay i mean listen i think he's a great person i think okay. that he's you know he's 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 him and i are in a great place mm-hmm. and a great relationship and you know I think, you know, he was just on the shade room kissing some bad young bitch. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. His, he was sticking his tongue in some young hoe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? He definitely getting some pussy. But one thing about it, I've never done no weird shit with him on no on no uh, tip like that. What do, you, what do y'all know about, like, the escort industry, man? Like The girls be selling that pussy. Did you, like, go through a <laughs> point in your life, you know, when you were dancing the escort industry? Like, what was that like? Well... <sighs> Well, thanks to the universe, I was so cute. I never had to like 
sell my body. I told you I was so cute and the guys were so nice to me. Like literally, I was like so lucky. Cause really too, I danced a long time ago, which is different from you know the girls stripping now. When I was dancing, I felt like the guys was more like gentlemen. They were nicer, yeah. and they like when you I. You must have been know, at like the gentleman's club, like you know, you no, got no, like no, the upscale, no, you know, like at, cheetah. Uh, Magic City, and then I did diamonds. Um, oh, shout out to Magic, man! Yeah, shout I did out Magic, Magic City. and then I did Onyx, and I I don't know, I just felt like when I when I stripped, the guys were more respectful than they actually, you know, were like after like years after I stopped. So for me. I really had respect for guys that came to the club. They spent money. They wanted a good time. You know, married guys just want to come. Some guys just want to talk. Some guys want to talk. So I got lucky. I got so, so lucky, so lucky that I were able to just dance. Well, what's your craziest experience in the club when you were dancing? Uh, Probably that we got raided. And it was like a lot of police. A lot of police. What what club? Magic City? uh, Rollers. When I danced at Rollers. Where was that at? In Miami, Rollins oh, is in Miami. Oh, Miami, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rollins is in Miami. Probably that was the craziest thing because there's this police coming in with guns and stuff like that. Like, what the fuck you going know, on? Working. Basically, you go to jail if you're soliciting. Soliciting is like uh-huh. if you ask for a dance. Like if you're in the customer, a, a customer, and I'm like, hey, you want to dance? That's basically soliciting. So like, you know, back in the days, they used to use that just to yeah. have people go to jail and, you know, they uh-huh. had needed something to do, basically. You uh, ever did some time? So, uh, some time? Uh, when I was a teenager, I probably did like eight months in juvenile, but nothing, nothing when oh, I was, shit. yeah, but yeah, nothing when I was okay. of age. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing when I was, I was just being bad and my mom locked me up. Nothing when I was like of age. I never went to jail. Though. Now, when you was in the game, did you like, did you really pimp hoes? Like back in the day? I mean, look, I know people say that. Pimped a little bit. I know pe- pe- people say that. Arranged a little bit. I know people said that, but it wasn't pimp. It was more of so what I do with like the cabaret. Right. It was more so of that. Of that vibe. I never really just put down on hoes and pimp. I could have, but never had time. Right. Girls it's a lot of work pimping, man. Yeah. It was more It was more of girls knowing that I made money, that I was successful, that I was young and I was attractive and I was getting my money. It was more of girls trying to get advice and trying to yeah. be down with me so I could put them on and just kind of help them out and stuff like that. Sort of like the cabaret, nothing right. like crazy. But yeah, I have my share of bitches that I have for years, you know, Breaking me off, and I put them in position and stuff like that. I've always right. had a, oh, I've always had a management brain. Right. You always been on that. I always now, had a management. brain. Do you plan on opening any clubs? My management told me this morning. She's like, "Bitch, you got to open up a cabaret in Miami." Yo, if you open up a Jocelyn's cabaret in Miami, that shit would be huge. Yeah, she told me this morning. She's like, "You got to open up a cabaret in Miami." I'm like, Melissa, give me a few years, because she's always like, you know, they always ballistic and Melissa are always bringing ideas to me but you know i don't like to spread myself sure i'm only one person right and 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 one thing i learned is not to like overwork myself where i'm like you know crying and and you know have anxiety and i'm doing things that i'm not supposed to do just because i want to get something done that somebody told me i should do right you know now you being a miami girl now and you know you grew up in fort lauderdale for the people that's visiting miami that's never been to miami what is the best strip club in miami well right now what do you think melissa because i haven't danced in such a long time what's the best strip G5, shout out to G5. Round of applause yeah, to you know G5. What? Yeah, they should, and that's a good one, babe, because not only that, that was one of my highlights when I used to be a stripper, when I danced it uh, in, a, it used to be called Diamonds, before, mm-hmm. it was, it, before it was called G5. And so when it was Diamonds, I used to dance there, and I thought it was one of the best. I've actually made some of the most money and met some of the richest, wealthiest people when I worked at Diamonds. I remember that the Miami Heat had some of the biggest players when I used to work there and they used to come in and spend money. Them Heat we, players be yeah, balling. Back, back then, I What's forgot. the most you ever made? In one night? Mm-hmm. $40,000. Damn! Can we with get Africans. a bomb for that? Yeah, oh, with fuck. the Africans. Yo, it's always them Africans. I end, mar- I end up marrying the African. Africans, you know, with me, like I've, my ancestors are... Africans spend money. Ballistic, you African? Yeah, I've What part of Africa are you from? Oh my goodness, please, I'm the I prince of Ghana. Please, my nigga, please, that. I want to go to the strip club with my nigga. We spit somebody, nigga. That sounds like ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, oh, I've always enjoyed, I don't know, I always loved Africa, man. I, listen, as, as a black girl being born in a Spanish island, my ancestors, my blood, my life, my everything was just black, man. 
them Africans, they're aggressive. They know how to catch you. Like, please, why don't you answer your phone? Please, I want to they're, take they're, you they're out. They're, listen, they such please, players. I'll buy you any ticket one time and reach yeah, nigga. They're so, <laughs> sh- they're like, they are such players and they always want to go after the most beautiful woman, like, in the building. Right. But I love them. Shout out to the Africans. I love Africans. Shout out to the I Africans, Africans man. And Africans. shout out to Ghana, too. Sayer. Pendejo. Talking about Ghana. The Congo. <laughs> you been to Ghana? No. Are you from Ghana? No, but I did a prank. You know, I started doing pranks and it went viral before the podcast and I played like I was a prince of Ghana. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So. I see that. I see that. I see that. <laughs> you, oh, you think Africa. you're a king? Look at all the. Look at this. Please, I told you, I I'm the like prince of Ghana. Please, I'm this not. is my throne <laughs> right here, my new guy. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Scarface house. I'm telling you. I want to go to Ghana. I want to go to Africa. I've never been to Africa. You travel a lot to Africa? I went to Africa a few times. It's beautiful. I went there when I was like 21, 23. Uh, it's beautiful. The people that are rich are very wealthy. It looks like Miami. It looks like America. I like feel people, like people try to scare us. They tell yeah, us, they do. don't they do. go to Mexico, don't go to Africa, you'll well, get Mexico's killed. Well, Mexico's dangerous. Uh, listen, all of them are dangerous. If you go with the right crew and the right people, you'll, you, you'll have an amazing time. I love Nigeria. That's where I went to. And then I, it's just like the most amazing part. Like, you know, you, you, you kind of feel like this is where you come from. You know, I've always been such a black girl. Right. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm not a Puerto Rican girl. I'm a black girl that was born in Puerto Rico. You've always been attracted to black men? Or yeah, Spanish. but I'm because I'm a black woman. Right. Spanish, white, whatever. That's cool. But I'm a black woman and I like black men. Right. What about y'all? Now y'all look like y'all Latin. Y'all like what y'all like? <laughs> I like black men. Hey, what you like? Uh, I'm. I don't have a type. Diamond black. don't like black men. Diamond like the Spanish boys. I like Dominicans. She like Dominicans. You like them Dominicanas. Mm-hmm. Does she? I had to call her out because she always likes a Dominican. So I had to call her out. She loves a Dominican. Oh she loves God. a Dominican. She loves a Dominican. Now, before we get out of here, we got to also, we have another record we're going to premiere on here. But I want to ask you, Jocelyn, like, you came up like, you had really rough, like, childhood. You know what I'm saying? You were, you, were, you would kind of raise yourself. You were on your own. You said you was you were barefoot. You didn't have no shoes. Like, what was life like growing up for you? Well, when I was in Puerto Rico... We lived in the projects. Uh, it's called uh, Las Esmeraldas. It's the name of the project where I grew up at. And I came to uh, Fort Lauderdale when I was like six or seven. And in Puerto Rico, we didn't have anything. I used to be running outside without no shoes and stuff like that, getting needles on my foot, having to go by stairs. Like, mom, take this off. Like, you know, like drug, like drug needles or whatever. Um, you know, we probably had like one pair of shoes to go to school. But we didn't really have that much. And my mom really in Puerto Rico, she truly did what she could. And people ain't seen the hood until you go to another country. Until you go to another country, yeah. Even the though, hood even in though, America ain't like the hood in another yeah, country. Yeah, even though Puerto Rico is, you know, whatever, like a, uh, like a state, right? Like, right. like Hawaii or whatever. But, um, you know, my mom really truly did what she could. But she had five children when she met her husband, my, my stepdad or whatever in Puerto Rico. She, my, mom, my mom already had five kids when she met him. Right. Actually, when she was pregnant with... My little brother, she met her husband or whatever. And, you know, she did what she could or whatever. She had five fucking children. And she was like a single mother. Then she met my stepdad, and then he brought her to Florida. And I was like, I I probably was like seven or eight. And uh, when I was there, I didn't really have that much. But I do remember special moments that my mom did for me. Like, you know, when I went to like uh, kindergarten, like uh, graduation or whatever. I, I remember special moments. But, you know, because I feel like my mom never really learned from her mom. It was difficult for her to teach us. But then when we got here to America, you know, uh, it was so many children. Uh, her husband was working. And, you know, she's trying to figure it out. And it's so many kids. So we kind of like raised ourselves right right like yeah. uh all six of her kids right actually she left my sister in puerto rico when she was 16 and her baby daddy got shot 30 times damn yeah so it was a lot i know she's so proud of you yeah it, it was a lot it was, i mean look i she better be proud of me because i'm like the only one i'm not gonna say i'm because my one of my brothers is a real hustler but she, she know i took it to, to like the next level you got a good relationship with your brothers and sisters or no they can call me anytime they need me, but I'm not hanging out with them every day because I'm so busy and right. I really don't have time for family drama. Right. And so as much as I love my family and want to be there with them and hanging out with them every day, unfortunately, I have so much to do that I just I can't get involved. Like big parties and the kids birthday parties and it's stuff like that. I'll come like I'll come through like if it's like a big party, family party or I get together. I'll come through. Remember, listen, come through. We talk to the family. We see them and stuff like that. But I'm not like an everyday type of person because I'm 
I'm really trying to get my shit so right when to buy my mom a bigger house and right. she she owns a house, but to buy my mom a bigger house, you know, for ballistic and I to buy his mom a bigger house and right. help the family out and stuff like that. So Round I'm, applause I'm, for I'm that. always you gotta look out I'm for mine. Always there, but you know, I'm I'm like super busy doing my own things. But you know, coming from Puerto Rico was super hard because not having nothing coming to America. I remember I had a kindergarten teacher that was very special to me. I don't even remember her name. Hopefully she sees this and she remind she remembers. She believed she in you. She had short black hair in in in, in Fort Lauderdale, and I was like, uh, I was in kindergarten. I was like, probably because I did kindergarten late because I came from Puerto Rico. So I was like six or seven when I did kindergarten. Right. Instead of being five like my daughter was, because when I came, you know, you the time is, like, yeah. is kind of different. And they don't give you the like credits that. and all that. Yeah, when you the move time to is different. Steps. You got to kind of do it over. But she, she just, you know what? She's the reason why I write. Right. I don't. I wish. I really wish I knew her name. Hey man, shout out to your your teacher. If yeah. you're watching this, can you please get I in really touch wish with her? I knew her name. Now, you know, a lot of girls watching this, so many people look up she to was you. A, she was a young teacher in kindergarten, but she told me something that I never forgot. She told me to just write. She was like, even if it's Spanish and it's in English. And I just wrote. I wrote. And she was like, she was young, right? But she was, um, she just told me to write. And I feel like she's the reason why I'm a writer. Wow. Even though I was writing in Puerto Rico, but she was like, write. Wow, bring her some tissue. She was tissue. like, right. Wow. And I just wrote. And she she was Spanish and she was English, so she read it. She read it like in Spanish and English, and I just feel like that was what made me be such a good writer. And then when she read it, she made me feel like I wrote something great. <laughs> wow. Even though what I wrote was like gibberish, right? And that she shows, was reading it. Yeah. She was reading it like I wrote such, such a great, such a great poem. She right. was like, oh my gosh, and it was in Spanish and English, and, she, and she, I was in kindergarten. And that shows how she like one person can she have an like, effect on you. She was really like, she was really reading it like I wrote some stuff. And when I was in Puerto Rico, I remember my, my mom would say, "Oh my gosh, you're a great writer." Right. I wrote my mom a couple of things. She was like, "Wow, you're a great writer." And that's crazy. Before I'm like an entertainer or a rapper or a singer or a dancer or an actress, I'm a writer. Right. She, you know, I just always remember my mom told me that I was a great writer in the teacher in kindergarten here in Fort Lauderdale. She was like, "Just write." Wow. I don't know why she just filled that in me. And I wrote like this big thing. And you think like that was like a message from God. She was reading English and she was just like. Like that was like, like a message from God like sent through her for you. I don't know. I don't even know what this thing Because you was is. a little, you was young. I was a little girl. Yeah. I was like six, seven years old. And I remember I was writing it because my first language is in Spanish. So I was writing in Spanish and, and I was learning in English. And she was like, just write. And so you know, I was writing in Spanish right. and in English. And so y'all got understood. Yeah. Y'all got to be careful what you say to people because you never know what kind of effect you can have on someone. Like one positive message to someone as a little kid could like inspire yeah, them Yeah, she inspired so me so much, much. but she could have she could have literally been like, what is this? But right. she was, she was, she, I don't know who this lady, she had short hair, black hair. I was in kindergarten and I came from Puerto Rico and she was reading it in front of the classroom like I was somebody. She just really wow. made me feel like I was, I was somebody. That's Mind crazy you, how you remember that too. I remember so that because it's something is in my life that I remember. Like, wow. I don't remember a lot, but like being five, six, seven, like if some things that happened, I remember. That I hate the fact that I can't remember my childhood. Only like key moments. Yeah. You know how like right. when you get a certain age, One you forget five. everything. But like, it's so dope, man. Like, you're so man, real. Man, when she told me to write, I was like, shit. And, I, and then I've been writing since. I've always been a writer. Like, I like literally, I have notebooks. So many notebooks. Like, I start a note, notebook all the time. Well, I have three main notebooks that I write in all the time. Wow. And those notebooks, they, they're almost finished. So I have to get my next three. But I've been running in those three notebooks in the past year. So, like, I'll keep them and then I have them. But I'm not really, like, a computer person. I like to write right. with my hands. So that was a big moment when she told me to write. She was like, just write. Right. And, and I think that And write my your life. dreams down, too, guys. Yeah. Write it down. Like, make a list of everything you want to accomplish, whether it's, like, a weekly things you want to accomplish, monthly, your yearly plan. Like, write it down. If you don't write it down... You'll get distracted. You'll end up not doing nothing, man. But it's like you're such an inspiration, like watching this and, and just listening to you. You're such an inspiration to so many people. And, you know, I got to ask you one last question before we get out here because a lot of girls watching this, they look up to you. They want to know, like, how can a girl find a rich nigga? Because I know, like, you coming <laughs> up, you met a lot of ballers, billionaires. You know, you got bullets. Like, what can a girl do to find a rich nigga? Not look for him. Let him come to you. 
Yeah. Now look for him. him. Now look for him. I think yeah. that when I met Ballistic, like he he hit me up on Instagram. He was like, "Hey, Puerto Rican princess, can you cook for me?" I said, "Nigga, take me to Mr. Shaw's." And he was like, "Yeah, but I dress. I'm gonna take you to Mr. Shaw's, but I dress me as a kid." I was mm. like, "All right, whatever." So we the first day we didn't even go to Mr. Shaw's. We went to have a drink and then we fucked the first the first night like. <laughs> <laughs> so like I had met him before with Bonnie when she was six months, but he had a girlfriend, so he didn't pursue me. Mm. Right. So like a year later. So when you met him, he was taken. When I met him in the stu- in his studio in Miami, he was taken. I went. There See, ladies, like, if you meet someone when they taken, that don't mean nothing. Take them. Yeah, well, no, we had a. Sometimes great you gotta take what because the good girls conversation- are always taken. But we didn't. Fuck, but we didn't fuck. We didn't do any freaky shit. We didn't do none of that. But I met him in the studio. I had my daughter. I was with a homegirl. She was fucking with his best friend that he's still best friends with. I went in there. Had like talked to him for like two hours. Body was in the front. They had the area. They had a few different rooms. The body was in the front with the friend I was in in the non smoking room. I was in the back with him, talking to him. We talked for for like maybe like two hours, and then I didn't see him for like. I didn't see him for like another year and a half because he he was in a relationship, which is crazy. The girl he was in a relationship with, with has the same birthday as me. Mm, it damn, was that's so fucking crazy. crazy. He was with, yeah, he was with her for like seven years. So like, he has a type. Maybe. Yeah. No he, one's like Jocelyn. Thank you. Yeah, right. That's, that's thank you. No so he was he was in in a relationship with the girl for like seven years, and I was in a relationship prior with, you know, Stevie with. So did you With leave that, Stevie for him? No, we didn't meet till after. So after y'all already broke yeah, up. Yeah, we didn't meet till I, after I broke up with Stevie. And he was still in a relationship, but trying to like, they were separating. So we talked, we had a good time, but like, we really didn't get together till like after. And he was always pursuing me. Like he pursued me. We had a great conversation that uh, the day I met him in the studio. And then like, I didn't hear him, didn't hear from him for like a year and a half. And I was like, damn, what happened to him? Whatever, whatever. I was like, the nigga gone here. Like me, he gone. Like we talked for two hours. He was cool. I thought that everything was cool. He met Bonnie when we went on a day. Bonnie was on the day with us. He Everything was cool. And then he didn't call me for like, a year and a half. Then he called me back when Bonnie was two. He DM'd me when, when Bonnie was two years old and Bonnie's six now. And he's been wow. taking care of me and Bonnie since then. He hit me up on Instagram. And uh, we've been- Shout out to Instagram. <laughs> you, like, Instagram is like the new dating app. Like, yeah, fuck exactly. Bumble and all that shit. On you can meet like, someone on Instagram now. And it was, uh, it was, um, he was like, listen, he was like, maybe some food. I was like, nigga, take me to Mr. Shots. He was like, okay, but I dressed me as a king, not a nigga. But I was what like, okay, he... whatever. And then he and then and then we went out, but we didn't go to Mr. Shots because it was we had to take Bonnie to her grandmother's house. It was far. We came back, we went to San Rich, just had some drinks, and I was like, fuck it, let's go to my house, let's fuck. And we've been together since. Hey, damn, shout out to that. But but what if he had like took you to like Applebee's, like got that two for twenty? Uh, well, you still told like him... fucked with him. Well, I had I had texted him on the DM that I wanted to go to Mr. Shaw's, and he said okay. So I knew that he wasn't going to be like, well, you know, like we never ate at Applebee's, but we eat like regular like food shit. that's regular, right? Like, but we, for the first date, would you be open to going to like a cheap restaurant? Well, remember, I had already met him, and I feel like a certain lady, if they got standards, I feel like every man that's going to come their way going to know, like, oh my god, she got standards. I got to save my coins to take her to eat at the right place. So you need like she, a fancy place. Oh, like, what about the, y'all? Y'all oh, whatever ever, the girl makes shoes. Right. So y'all ever had, like, a dude take you to a cheap place? First date? Not on the first date. They got to be, like, after you already fucking days. with them. Yeah, they, 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 they always show out in the beginning, and then... And then, they, and then you realize how broke they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm like, I go like this. Like, I start off small, and then I just go up the mountain. Some people like that. Too. I feel like you know what I'm saying? like that, too. Yeah, like, I got to see that you really fuck with me. I got to see that, like, you, you really fuck with me. And then I'm going to turn up on you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just me. But, man, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so inspired by you. I'm so proud of you. Keep doing your thing. We can't wait to see Jocelyn's Cabernet Season 4. And, and Jocelyn's Cabernet Season 4 in New York in May 2023. Jocelyn's College Hill 2023 in May. Booked and busy. Jocelyn's... What else am I missing, babe? I'm missing something. I'm missing one she thing. She got babe. so much going on. And the She's soundtrack. Lit. And the soundtrack. All the music you play. Wait, when is the EP coming out? In May, also. Everything so all, is May. In Next May 2023. Yeah, yeah. May 2023. I had to ask my husband or the girls because I'm like, you know, so much that I miss. But shout out. Thank you for playing all the music and thank you for. Thank you so much. Believing in my music and liking it and really appreciating it. So appreciating it and, and, and loving it. 
for bringing the fans. It's great. I'm glad that I came, you know, over to talk to you because a lot of, I feel like you're really cool. A lot of people like, you know, they, you have to be vulnerable to do an interview and you have to really trust the person that right. you're going to go see. Cause That's you true. know, people be playing games and it's like, right. yeah, you could ask questions and you could ask questions. However you feel like asking questions. I'm going to give you the answer that I'm going to give you, but you've been very respectful. And also like, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a growing place in my life where like, I'm only giving like great energy and great vibes to people because no matter right, where the growth I, is so crazy. Yeah, because no matter where I come from, every person that I've been around or every person that I know have actually gave me an opportunity to be able to sit here with you right. and give you this interview so you can grow too. Absolutely. And so and I, I, I and, and so, I want to thank you yeah, for taking so, the time out of your busy schedule to come to the show. It means so much. We were so excited. So many people were excited about this. And uh, make sure you guys check out season four and make sure you check out her new ep coming out yeah. make sure you follow her make sure you subscribe but before we get out here we got to close out with another record play the last record play the speed, play, play the speed version though play the speed version yeah robert play make sure they play the speed version play that speed version thank you so much bro. You the we gotta person. turn up before we get out of here hey you have a good time? i had an I like amazing it. time you're so lit Play that speed version. Hold on. Before we get out of here, play that speed version. We're going to turn up. Let me stand right there. Say that. Hey. 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 Let's get paid. Let's get this party started. Let's get loud. Let's go play. Let's get this party started. 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 Party started. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Bring these fans in here. Hey. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Uh oh. Round of applause for Jocelyn. Cut it off, cut it off. Round of applause for Jocelyn Hernandez, a Puerto Rican princess in the building. Shout out to Ballistic Man and shout out to these lovely ladies. We can't wait to see y'all on the show as well. Make sure you follow them. Their links will be in the description, man. Let's go. Hey, but before we get out of here, I got to ask y'all, where we at? We in Miami, baby. We in Miami.